Hello guys, I am Paul McWhorter from TopTechBoy.com and I am here today to review a new microprocessor that's coming out on the market called the Omega 2 Plus by Onion. The Onion Omega 2 Plus. And what I'm going to call this review is, is there room for the Onion? Okay, because to really review this product, it's not just about what this product can do, it's how does this product fit into the overall landscape of little microcontroller boards that are already there. And if you look at it over here, it's a pretty crowded field, okay? It's a pretty crowded field already. And if you look at some of the things we have, I will make myself small for a second. There we go, okay? There is the old standby, the Arduino, everyone's favorite. There is always room for the Arduino. In fact, usually when I'm gonna do a quick project, I start with the Arduino. There are various versions of the Arduino. I particularly like the Arduino Nano, which is a very small, for, uh, fully functional version of the Arduino. And then uh, as you're working with the Arduino, you reach a day where you need a little more power, a little more horsepower in your projects, and then you move up to the Raspberry Pi. I particularly love the Raspberry Pi 3, and so what I find is I spend a lot of time working on the Arduino, working on the Raspberry Pi 3, or working on projects that have Arduinos and Raspberry Pi 3 is working together and so you can see that already we are getting pretty good coverage of the space as far as the things that I want to do I can usually find a solution with uh, <clears throat> with the things that are shown here but there are even more one is the Beagle Bone Black and the Beagle Bone Black is sort of a head-to-head -head competitor with the Raspberry Pi 3 on the BeagleBone Black, uh, there's some arguments that can be made for it. If you're doing a side-by-side -side comparison, sometimes some arguments can be made for the uh, BeagleBone Black that, you know, it's got this or it's got this. But, but the problem is uh, when we get into projects, it's not about how much hypothetical power you have on the board. It's how many features you can actually deliver to the end user. And the problem with the BeagleBone Black is is that it uh, uh, the, the BeagleBone Black is it never really developed a very significant user base, and so there's a lot of people using Arduino. There's a lot of people using Raspberry Pi 3. No matter what problem you run into, you can go on a forum, you can go on the internet, you can find somebody that's working on the same thing, and you can get a lot of help. Work with a lot of people. Be helped, be a help, and everything works. And I'm afraid that for the BeagleBone uh, Black that that same uh, enthusiastic user base has just never quite developed. I will say that I have, on occasion, used the BeagleBone Black because there are a couple of things. Sometimes you just need more than one UART. You need more than one serial connection, TX and RX. And the Raspberry Pi just has one. And so sometimes if I have two components, both that want to use that serial bus, I will use the BeagleBone Black because it does have uh, more than one serial port. And so sometimes I'm forced to use it. One other thing about the BeagleBone Black is it does have kind of like the equivalent of an analog in. And and the Raspberry Pi does not have the equivalent of an analog in. And so when I have projects that need those things, sometimes I just sort of hold my breath and I use the uh, BeagleBone Black. There are workarounds that you can do on the Raspberry Pi, but sometimes just to get the project up and running, I will use the BeagleBone Black. But if you really want to look and say, is there really room for both of them? I would kind of take the BeagleBone off the table because of uh, there's just not as many libraries. There's not as many users there's not as much help out there and so really the parameter space I think uh, I'm also uh, yeah I love the Arduino Uno but I'm going to take it off the table because when I'm going to do an Arduino project I really like the Arduino Nano it does everything that the Arduino Uno does is smaller and is more compact more uh, able to put into a prototype that's in a small form factor and so now you can see that kind of our our, our parameters spaces we've got the Raspberry Pi 3 and we've got the uh, we've got the uh, Arduino Nano now Raspberry Pi came out with something that initially I was very excited about the Raspberry Pi Zero and I was very excited because they were saying it was going to be five bucks and it's very very small and I got really excited about it but if you look at my last review 
on the Raspberry Pi Zero. What happened with the Raspberry Pi Zero is, is that it does have two uh, micro USB connectors, so you can connect a keyboard, you can connect a mouse, and you can connect a uh, display, a screen through the HDMI port. But darn it, you know, the reason I want a small computer is not to act like a, a desktop. I want something that will fit in my pocket that I can do something really cool with. And the Raspberry Pi Zero does not have Wi-Fi, okay? And if you want to use it, you got to hook up a doofus dongle and try to really make like a prototype look like a product when you've got this doofus dongle hanging off. So unfortunately, on the table, I have to take the Raspberry Pi Zero off the table. So as far as the parameter space in the world that I'm working in, I've got the Arduino Nano. I've got the Raspberry Pi 3. Uh, some projects I use the Pi 3, some projects I use the Arduino, some projects I use both of them. Okay, And so now as we've sort of cleared off the table a little bit, we ask ourselves, is there room for the Onion Omega 2 Plus? And I have to say that uh, as a guy that makes videos and has a website and is sort of a voice on the internet about these kind of do-it-yourself hobbyists, you know, kind of the maker community, I am really skeptical when a new platform comes out because I've got boxes of things that never really developed and you sort of got a one-of-a-kind kind of thing. And so I'm really, really skeptical about a new platform, all right? But I will say that at this point there are some things that really intrigue me about the Omega, uh, the Onion Omega 2. And let me kind of kind of get into that a little bit and we'll sort of unbox it here and take a look at it. And one thing right off the bat I like, I like how on the box it gives me the MAC address and that's kind of a nice thing because if you ever get in there and start trying to fool around figuring out your MAC address, very nice Onion, thank you for giving me the MAC address on the box. And then it's in a little static uh, bag here. And then it comes out and oh my goodness, look at it. It is about the size of a postage stamp. And in fact, if we look at it, uh, we'll put it on the table here. I'm not saying it's gonna stay on the table, but for right now, for the sake of this video, we are going to give it a place on the table. And look at that. Right off the bat, you can see that, that if compactness is something that you're interested in, it is actually smaller than the uh, Raspberry Pi Zero. And so that earns it at least a temporary spot on the table. So normally, like I say, I'm a skeptic and these new platforms that come out, I will just almost dismiss them out of hand. Things like the Edison, I never got into that. A lot of these platforms I never really got into. But this, I'm willing to give a, a chance. I'm willing to take a look at it because it's small. Right, very small, I can imagine, making a cool little thing that would fit in my pocket. And second of all, I believe these are coming in around five or ten bucks, and I think maybe I'm not for sure the two is projected to be about five bucks, and the two plus is projected to be uh, maybe about ten bucks. Uh, I don't know, you know, these things change, but basically, very low cost, very small size. So it, it got my interest. Okay, this is the thing that if you are comparing the Raspberry Pi Zero and the Onion Omega 2 Plus. You could say, well, this has got more memory or this has got more speed or this has got this or this. And you start getting down into the minutia of the performance specs. But to me, there is really one thing that matters. Yes, this is a Linux machine. Yes, this is a Linux machine. I can run Linux. You know, I'm not trying to calculate Pi to the bazillion figure. I need something that'll fit in my pocket. They'll run Linux, don't need it to be a supercomputer, so I'm not that interested in the speed or the number of processors or blah, blah, blah. But this is the thing. The Onion Omega 2 Plus has Wi-Fi built in. Okay, what does that mean that it has Wi-Fi built in? That means if I make a cool little gadget that fits in the pocket as I walk around, it can be connected to Wi-Fi. And if it doesn't do that, it's not very interesting and it's not very useful to me. So when I look at the Pi Zero and the Onion Omega 2 Plus, the reason that I am interested in considering doing a series of how-to, a series of video lessons on this is, is that it is small, 
it is low cost, it is Linux, and it has Wi-Fi. And because of that, to me, the Onion Omega 2 Plus has a place at the table. Now you can see that it's very small and you can see that the pins are really packed on there very, very tightly. And so they're sort of good and bad with that. The, the, the bad is it'd be kind of hard to come in and connect to it and actually boot the thing up. The good, the good part of it is, is that at the point that you really want to kind of get sort of a prototype that looks like a product, this is really, really compact. But as far as it not being easy to connect to, do not worry because they have provided sort of a dock. And that dock is really your first stage of getting the, uh, the Onion Omega 2 Plus working because what it does is it looks something more like the Raspberry Pi or the Arduino. And what this does is it plugs into very nicely. And I also like how it's easy to get it plugged in the right direction because you see they have the corner cut out. And with that corner cut out, you can... Uh, plug it in very nicely. And now look at that. I've got a little USB port. It looks like I have an on-off switch. I've got a little, uh, maybe, a, is that a, yeah, it looks like a little reset button on it. Actually, I'm kind of happy with that because if there's one, as much as I love the Raspberry Pi, if there was one little complaint I have about it, there's no reset button, there's no reboot button, there's no on-off. And so that, to me, sort of creates a problem. So I'm happy that they put that on this uh, this board. The, <clears throat> the other thing that's kind of nice is they give you, if you look, hopefully that is focusing, they give you a little key as to what pins are what. And we can actually switch over here and sort of see a pin out uh, from their website. What, what makes me happy is I see that I have a serial connection. I have TXRX. It looks like that I could wire into an Ethernet and then you have a lot of what would be sort of like your GPIO pins. I see that I have IC, I2C, uh, SCL, SDA. Uh, man, I'm looking at this. I've got USB. Uh, I've got 3.3 volts in. It looks like I've got everything I need in something that is very small. And I've got onboard Wi-Fi, which means if I do something neat with this, I could actually make something that fits in my pocket without having a bunch of these, uh, a bunch of these silly dongles. And so we're going to put this over here and we're going to say that this is something that we are willing to, uh, to look at. So guys, what uh, I'm going to do at this point with the uh, Omega Onion, uh, uh, the Onion Omega 2 Plus, and remember, I'm a skeptic. Most things I just throw out because I think that the space is already too crowded. <clears throat> At this point, I'm going to give it a thumbs up.